Oh, that's crunchy. What's that? That really got me in the face. Now, before we start, if you are Lots watching this... Glasses. Oh, yeah, no, it's just writing something. Anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Welcome to the Wedding Crunch, episode 2, 2024. Oh, yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. But we're we're doing a refresh. We're starting up. Yep. We're back. We're back, baby. Baby. We've probably got four listeners now, Johnny. <laughs> We've got crazy viral. Hey. Yep. Um, in case you're watching on um, YouTube instead of mm. just listening, mm. I am wearing an asymmetrical top that drives Johnny nuts. But guess what? This is the fashion, and this I'm seeing oh, more and more wedding party ladies wearing this. Asymmetrical. asymmetrical. We're, we're, you know, I see more of the left shoulder than I do of the right. Yeah, it drives him nuts. It drives me nuts. Anyway. I don't get it. It's like wearing your jocks that way. I've done that before. I have put my G-string on the wrong way <laughs> and I was uncomfortable all day till I figured out I'd put my leg in the wrong hole. And I digress. I have a picture in my head. <laughs> We've all done it. Don't well, think it's G-string's on backwards. No, no, it's sideways. More sideways than backwards. Back front, if it's on backwards, it's going up your front bottom. You know when it's on backwards. If you don't know if it's on sideways until halfway through your day. Anyway, enough about underwear. <laughs> So this is how close we are. This is a movie in television. <laughs> okay, what we're talking about today, Johnny, yes, decided what? on Tell choosing me. the perfect photographer for you. What are the odds that a photographer would be here in this I know. podcast? And then we're going to go on to choosing the perfect celebrant for you. Again. But you go. Say. What makes you... The perfect photographer oh, or what lovely. advice can you give to a couple in choosing the uh okay, okay okay you need to look at photographers for style and try and work out what that style is mm. is the style more manufactured and set up and orchestrated or is it more freewheeling is it more people orientated so those are the things i of course am very biased <laughs> and and I, I do so. hate I do hate a structured dorky setup shot. Yes. Although sometimes you know that you do have to set certain shots up or else it's just an absolute shit show. But Sharon, the bride and groom kissing and then the bridal party around them and the photographer says, No, everyone looks like Actually surprised. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is a bit. What is that? That doesn't sort of bullshit. But yeah, so the photography style as far as you know it goes, have a look at a a complete portfolio. Yes. Look at one wedding and all the shots that go into that wedding. It's going to show you, give you a better feel of how the day's going to roll. And if you look at those shots and you see something you don't like, if you see a bridal party of one of them in each of the vineyards all lined up like dorks and the photographers run back 50 metres to take a big wide shot and everyone is this big in the shot and you go, that is crap, then don't book that guy. If you love that shot, don't call me. Well, this is the whole thing. I believe there is someone for everyone. For every old sock, there's an old shoe. True. Right? Did your, but the did more style, your nan tell us that one? My nan, yes. Actually, no, I don't think my nan did say that. I do say that a lot. My nan used to say. Anyway. Yeah. But you are, for many people, your mm. style. Because a lot of style now is documentary type photography, isn't it? Mm. One thing that is becoming more popular, and you'll be able to explain this a bit more and explain to our yep. couples that are listening, presets. There's a tone. Oh. Now, don't bag it, because a lot well, of I, our friends use it. I refer, it, I refer to it as Bondi Brown, <laughs> but I've been referring to it as Bondi Brown for 10 years. There's been okay. a bit of a kerfuffle on social media where uh, a bride had got shits with a photographer because all her shots are orange. Now, a lot of photographers' shots are orange. It's a style thing, and it's a, it is. they buy a preset, and they just add the orange button to everything, which is not my style. I don't like it. But if that chick had looked at the rest of the photographer's Correct. work That's it. and seen that it was orange, you can't complain afterwards that you don't like mm. the orange. Mm. The orange is what you've been sold, and the orange is what you bought. Unless the photographer said, I'm going to start at this wedding to do presets as in colour presets. This is the wedding I'm going to start at. Then it's not your fault because you're the first one. My first they ever orange done. wedding. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure that won't be the case. I don't think so either. No. Ever orange wedding. But that sort of, again, there's a colour and a feel and Instagram is probably a big driver of that. Where you look across an Instagram feed and the photographers want, and not only photographers, all types of Instagram people, want their feed to have a colour cast to it. 
and so they'll put every shot in color in orange and there you go but again that's what the couple has been attracted to so therefore they will contact that photographer mm. if you don't like that look well, then you won't contact them. apparently that look is on the way out sharon well, all of that sad stuff comes well, well, no, that's hung around for 10 years that look. has it yeah that's been around forever that orange look but the new. Uh, <laughs> new trend apparently is for a lot more real colors a lot more normal sort of colors mm. because of again iPhones. Now, iPhones in a style. Where aren't they? They're good cameras these days. But they're driving the style. So what's going on now is, is expensive photographers, professional photographers who would shoot with um, lenses that have a very shallow depth of field and the background's blurry and stuff like that. No longer is a look that social media is giving brides. So when you're looking at shots or Instagram feeds and they've all been taken with mobile phones, everything's sharp. And then mm -hmm. this demographic of Gen Zs are only seeing images where there is no depth of field, where everything is razor sharp. And then that is pushing in for a bit of the style change where the background becomes sharper. And photographers are shooting now at F16 instead of F1.2. And for those of you who don't know photography, that will mean nothing. It's the size of a hole, people. The size of a hole! A 1.2 is a big hole, and an F16 is a small hole. Which means what? More Which means a small crazy. hole gives you a greater depth of field where everything is sharp, uh -huh. whereas the wide hole gives you a blurrier background. Right. There's your photography one up. Okay, so you, you're trolling on Instagram, you've yep. found the style that you like, all of their photos, you're mm -hmm. just loving sick, mm -hmm. you then contact that photographer because you already know you like their style. Yes. What, how do you go, so you, the, well, you've been shortlisted, right? Shortlisted. Let's just say you've been shortlisted. Johnny, you've been to, yep. now obviously you, your inquiry comes in, mm -hmm then what makes them choose you? Ah, then it becomes a personality thing. You want to get... Correct. You want, you, want, you want the style to suit, right? But then speaking to the photographer, making sure that that's somebody you can spend eight hours with. If you book a jerk and you're stuck with that jerk for eight hours, you've made the worst decision of your life okay. because you want to look at the photos and remember the experience that you had in the photo. So if there's a shot of... You and your bridal party laughing your heads off and everything's great. And you remember the joke or the buzz that, that Johnny had set up. Mm. Then there's an emotional attachment to the shot and you go, yeah, that's a great shot because I had a great day. As opposed to the photographer who's manufactured and he's setting things up and says, hey, everyone laugh. You look back at the shot and everyone's laughing, but you don't have an emotional attachment Connection. to that shot because you've been told to laugh and you've been told and set up. Now I go back to what my nan used to say for a yep. real old sock, it's an old shoe. Old shoe. Old shoe, old sock. Mm. So what if someone isn't into big personalities like you and I? Again, mm. that you wouldn't choose your lovey style, but you're just not sure he's going to be all right on the day to match your personality, yep. which is unheard of. I don't oh, understand yeah. that. The introvert wants another introvert. Correct. But a lot of introverts yeah. book me because they want me to bring them out. Yeah, I get the introvert because they introvert, want the extrovert extrovert. To, to... Correct. So yeah, we've yeah. got style, done. The inquiry comes in. Yep. You have a Zoom meeting because post-COVID, that's what we all yeah, do. You, you got, and you've got to have that meeting. A lot of have people, to. you can't just book the photographer. No. You need to have a Zoom meeting and chat to them. Yes. I, I, I hear other photographers who just book brides willy-nilly. No. Uh, talk to them. Yeah, Breezy does it. Oh, we love Briggsy. Yeah, Briggsy's a great does bride. Does really? Yeah, yeah. Briggsy will just go, oh, well, Johnny, I'll get along with everyone. Oh. He does. That is a true story. And that's, He's a classic example, because I've worked with him a couple of times, of high energy. I thought yeah. I was high energy. He pips me to the post. <laughs> Super over the top energy. But that, that's exactly it. You know, I, I couldn't book a bride and groom without meeting them. What if I didn't gel them? See, okay, let's go back. Let's go to yeah. this, not go back to. Let's you know, just go I'm, here. I'm in the luxury position that I don't have to take every single gig that comes yes. on. And if I get a sniff that you're a bridezilla, all of a sudden, your price is 28 grand and I'm out of there. Mm. Because... Oh, it's not back weddings, but we'll go back to me in a sec. Mm. Again, you both, you're both interviewing each other for the want of a better word, aren't you? It's not just it's two he sprint. can wait until I've made a decision. Sometimes a decision can be taken out of your hands. Yeah. Uh, therefore, and... you don't click. Therefore, you go to number two on your shortlist. Yes. Super and... important, isn't that? Well, and in, important that, yeah, we admit that we have got out of weddings that we know that there's no feels to. I have managed to get out of weddings because 
you sniff the bridezilla and you go, life is too short to hang with a bridezilla. But see, maybe she wasn't a bridezilla, it was just your personalities just didn't mesh. Could be, or she could but be a they, You know what, they didn't marry. Ah! Uh, that is a big thing. You can both be amazing people, but together, not so much. Different kinds of amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just trying to be politically correct like Angelina Jolie, they're probably amazing, and Brad Pitt amazing on their own. Put them together and they're a disaster. Only at the end. Probably, but that's where it matters. Yes. Well, I suppose, because it's the end. <laughs> All right, enough about photographers. Let's talk about celebrants. What is the important thing when you're looking for a celebrant? There are millions of them. Oh billions my God. and billions of celebrants are in the world. You and could throw a stone at any compass point yep. and hit a celebrant between the eyes. Yeah. That's how many there are of us yep. now. Yep. So where do you start? Referrals always good. Same with photographers. Referrals always good. Whether it be from a wedding you've already done, whether it's a friend of a friend. In, I've had a hairdresser. Yeah, we've had many from yeah. many different sources. But I think photographers referring celebrants is really important. That's, yes. Because there's many times where... You just work well together. I need you. Mm. <laughs> like you, you see a bride and groom who peck awkwardly and it's over in... A millionth of a second, oh. and Shaz gives me the one eye, and I go, mm. and she goes, ah, oh, it just that's not a great kiss. Go in for another. Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. Um, a lot of my same sex couples, we have a big chat about the kiss. Because uh, a lot of them that. don't like the PDA. Yeah, well, they're Boys being self-conscious in yeah. front of their family. I just go, fuck mm -hmm. that. This is your wedding. You do you, boo. Yeah. yeah uh, right. Anyway, that's a whole other ballgame. Actually, I think we've spoken about. My same sex was Anyway, we? choosing a celebrant. Please, yeah. Pretty much exactly the same thing. I'm going to go across the gamut here and say pretty much any supplier you book on the day, yep. you need to get along with. Even the oh. cake person, don't you agree? So the celebrant. I am not for everyone. There is no doubt about it. <laughs> Never mind. I am for many, but not for everyone. Yeah. Um, I Who wants am the, high energy. Who wants the everyone <laughs> celebrant? No, no, but again, you, we've spoken about this before. Corinne Harvey, the most beautiful woman, yep, the most so beautiful good. voice. We're polar opposites. Mm. So you've seen my photos. You've stalked all every single video because I'm talking. They don't need to see video of photographer. They need to see video of the celebrant because they want to see what it looks like. True. In their but wedding. Again, like, um, I see a lot of celebrants, and you're seeing more because you're with me Correct, as yes. an assistant. But the I've seen celebrants that that just, oh, my God, flat and boring, just one tone and the delivery, but again, uh, where they stand, those sort of things, the, the lack of input, the interaction with family, no good off the cuff, that sort of gear. Um, but that's your opinion. This couple chose that yes. celebrant. This celebrant may be $500 as opposed to me much more than that because yeah. it's just not important. The but ceremony. Hang on, hang on, I'm hang just on. saying the this ceremony is the may not be important to that them. That marries you. Everyone not some different. sheep, cut the balls, look across the, the gamut of suppliers and go, I'm going to cheapen out on a celebrant. It's a wedding, people. The celebrant is driving the bus of the wedding. Don't cheap it out. For an hour of that hour. Don't cheap it out on a celebrant. No, that's because you like working with some people. The point is, if you're a couple and yep. the ceremony just isn't as important to you but a necessity of that day, mm. I'm not the celebrant for you. No. Because but I put my gut, soul, blood, sweat, and tears into every ceremony. There are not a lot of celebrants that you would book because it's not important to you. No, because that's why they go for a, a much cheaper one that does say two ceremonies a year, just because they want a bit of pocket money. No, there's some, some great rookies. I've so, seen some terrible rookies. No, well, I just guess I wasn't terrible at the start. I've seen one where the the, the celebrant was a friend of the, uh, the groom and groom, and then they uh, she called one of them by the name of his dog. <laughs> <laughs> and just. And all the way through the ceremony, lost her place, didn't oh, know where she was, that sort of thing. Oh, you know. but oh, again, as, one, as much as you want to look after your friend who's a celebrant, man, I never see it go great. It's 5% of, of, oh, my friend's just becoming a celebrant, and you know, I'm going to go with her, and you know, I think there's a good emotional one. And then they just lose their place, and they ramble, and they don't know what they're talking about, and it's a disaster. Oh, I want a celebrant that has done a million gigs. Okay, we're not here for what you want. <laughs> if I was getting married again, mm. I would want a celebrant that's experienced as hell, that can 
anything you throw at them, they've got some response we're, we're to it. We're quick problem solvers. So I guess that's what you're paying for, Let, if we want to go into price. Mm. What you're paying for is experience. Mm. Anyone can do the Cert 3 that it takes to be a seller. Look at this. Look at the experience. <laughs> But the more experience you have, the more issues that happen along the way that you problem solve. And by when you get 10 years in, like oh, I nearly am, you can problem solve almost anything oh, without even thinking. It's That's nothing. what you're paying for. There's nothing that I would think could be thrown at you that you haven't already had. Oh, I never say never. Oh, yeah, but it's pretty, you know. You'd be... But again, we're back to they've studied, they've seen me on video, they know the sound of my voice, they know my that voice. it's not my voice, they know it's not monot you know, monotone, it's yep. just all over the shop. Yep. They know I get excited, so they then make the inquiry, we catch up via Zoom, and it's there that we either connect or we don't. Do you know what I think one of your biggest skills is? Is off the cuff, almost like a heckler. Like you're in a comedian gig and there's a heckler and you want to know how good the comedian is at shutting down the heckler. Mm. Yeah. Shaz, when she gets a heckler. Is... I don't can't believe you do get heckles uh, at a wedding. You you Usually it's a grandfather who's had a few or years. Or a the bride who yeah. wants to just, but, you know, yeah. crack a couple of gags or something. And his heart's in the right place. But the way that Sharon handles those is really, really good off the cuff. Oh yeah, I've got them in there ready to go, yep. locked and loaded. Yeah, I need to see you in a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a comedian, but I, I am a lot. I do off the cuff. Yeah. And look, and, and celebrants really, and again, when a couple, you know, when I speak to a couple and I want to know what they want from a celebrant, always the conversation of do you want a tall one, short one, fat one, skinny one? Do you want a comedy show? Do you want a gentle, soft? Do you want somewhere in between? Do you want the, the that knows the, the, the line of where it's not all about her and it's about the couple. Well, it's not about celebrant, full stop. And, well, some of them, it's about celebrant. Oh, no, no. Well, no, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them are pulling, pulling gags and you're thinking, oh, yeah, oh no. man, what's no, going on no, no, no. So, choosing your celebrant. Mm. Connection via Zoom. Yep. Obviously, because that's how we do it now, because we're all time poor, it feels oh. like. If you have a doubt, go with someone else. Mm, if you have doubt, leave it out. Oh, I like that. And my name took doubt. No, my name did not say that. If you doubt, leave it out. <laughs> because there will be someone better suited to you. Now, I know, I'll yep. give you one example before we tie this little section up. Yep. Uh, I met a same-sex couple. As most of you know, I am same-sex. I'm married to a woman. And I don't ever bring that up. If a same-sex couple approaches me, if it, comes, if it comes up, it comes up. But usually yes. they've found out because of my whatever it is, social media, but advertising, dance with her, whatever it may be. What is? What is. And this one couple said at the end of their meeting, we, and we had such an amazing conversation. It was funny. Then it was really deep because I asked about parents and how they feel about them getting married. Mm. That usually throws a curveball. Mm. And they said, we'd already pretty much locked someone in. We now have to say that we're not going to go with them because we had such connection with you that we were not expecting. They need to burn the celebrant that they thought they were going to book. No, I know the celebrant that they were going to book who is absolutely divine and I feel quite privileged that I was in the same category. Right. Anyway, so there you go. Sometimes you may have a connection. Still keep those appointments. I've had people cancel their appointments with me because they've made a connection with celebrant and they just didn't want to go but with At least they up. cancel. I had the ghost. Oh, the ghost. The ghost. Is there a problem with ghosts? What are people doing, Gen Z? <laughs> just the old Gen Z. Let's just send out a bunch of inquiries. And it, it, it's a weird situation where, hey, John, your stuff's amazing. Everything's great. When can we have a chat? Hey, okay, well, I'm free on Monday. And you've literally sent it three minutes after the emails come yep, in. Yep, yep. So you follow up. Well, I'm actually free on Tuesday and Wednesday, too. <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. It's the uh, weirdest experience. I Don't see that. Watch. They do um, lots of TikTok parodies on that. And they're hilarious. I would rather you just ring me and say you're a dickhead. At least I know I can. No one's going to ring you. Yeah, but I want to just close off the uh, the inquiry train and be done with it. But then you just chase. And well, there's not, I guess there's a nice lesson for couples, yeah. just so you don't burn too many bridges. Not they give a shit. But yep. if someone follows up on just following up on the inquiry, just shoot them a message back quickly to say thanks, we've found one. Done. I'd rather And that. then we can wrap it up, tuck it away, and then focus on something yeah. and someone else. It's, the, it's, really it's the not knowing, Sharon. Oh. <laughs> I don't really care. It's the hanging. <laughs> it's the hanging by a string. Yeah, really. Do they, want me? they told me they want me, but now they've disappeared. Oh, see, there's always someone around the corner, someone better suited to you, I yeah, believe. Yeah, I, yeah, oh, stop it. It's just on the finger in case you're not watching. Um, I believe 
they will find the right person. Well, I believe that and children you were are not future. that. You were not that person. On that particular account, but for another, you know, 80 odd couples a year over. Yeah, see? <laughs> now, one of the stats is last yes. year there were, I want to say, 144,000 couples got married in Australia last year. 144,000 in the whole of Australia. What's the Victorian number? I knew you'd say that. All right, segue. Next podcast, let's bring in some stats. I've got a little book at home. 144, I reckon. 144,000? Was it 14,000? 40 odd is it? Maybe it was 40,000. See, this is why you don't do stats until you've got it home in front of you and you're not going by memory. (laughs) (laughs) It was a lot. And Sydney and Melbourne are the biggest demographics for that that percentage. No doubt. But again, and that market is all predominantly 27 to 32. But in that in those statistics, I'm also which we will go into next time mm. is also the little elopements, the little micros, the registry offers. All of that comes into play when we talk about statistics yep. next time. Yep, true. And since you've said next time, Sharon, <laughs> let's roll. Choose wisely. That's what I. That's my parting gift. True. Choose, Choose wisely. wisely. Choose something that fits and there. Uh, right. And do your homework. Ask the photographer a lot of questions. Ask the seller a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Get one that's referred. Make sure there's a gel. Make sure you're going to enjoy the no, day with the person. I get a lot of my work from Instagram. Yeah, I would say Instagram too, but make sure you gel with those 100%. people. Because they're at your wedding. Mm. It's not like they're just coming around for a barbecue. Mm. It's your wedding. And also with photographers, you deal with them a lot post-ceremony. I deal with you Pre. pre-ceremony. So we're chatting and filling out questionnaires before the ceremony. Mm, mm, mm. Anyway, All right. I love it. That is the Wedding Crunch episode 2, 2024. <laughs> Boom. Whatever. See you.